Mary, what's going on? How are we doing? Hi, John. Um, thank you for taking my call. I'm really excited to talk to you today. And I'm um, excited to talk to you. It's been a blessing. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> thank you. We'll see. They always think I am until they actually call. <laughs> so what's up? Well, we'll see. Um, so I'm looking for some advice on how to navigate a conversation with my daughter's boyfriend's parents. Um, to kind of give you a little bit of background. <laughs> um, yes, I think I know it's coming. Please tell me I'm right. <laughs> You're probably right. Um, so she's 16 and there she's are, been dating hey, this boy. There are no good conversations <laughs> that begin with, I need help talking to my daughter's boyfriend's parents. <laughs> you are absolutely right. <laughs> it's going to sound like I'm laughing at you. I promise I'm not. But my daughter's yeah, you're five. Definitely... <laughs> my time will come, but it's not here yet. So I'm with you on this. Okay, so yes. I interrupted. So, Your daughter's 16? Yeah, no, that's okay. Um, she is 16. She's been dating a boy for about six months, and which is like basically forever when you're 16. It's a thousand years, yes. <laughs> yes. So um, things are getting, or feeling, I guess, pretty serious. Um, <laughs> she um, had him over last week. And basically what happened is, you hold know, on, we have just, a lot of kids. Hold on, hold on. Go you, ahead. <laughs> you started this call so good. So like, all right, I need your advice on this thing that happened here. And now yes. that we're getting closer, <laughs> you're circling this thing like like a slow record player in slow-mo. It's like... It's unfolding, yeah. So then a thing happened at our yeah. house and, you know... Right. <laughs> Barry White um, was on the record player and... All right, so walk me into this. Here we go. So I was busy with my other kids. We were all together, you know, hanging out, watching a movie. Um, I was, I got busy with the other kids, and uh, everybody kind of went outside, and I was like, okay, well, it's time for me to do something, you know, around the house. So I asked my daughter and her boyfriend to do a thing, and I thought they went and did a thing, but they did something else. Oh, they did a thing, so, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so luckily I didn't keep, I didn't actually visualize the thing that happened. Um, I only heard what happened. No! Um, and then, yeah. So you then heard I made it? it? I think I'd yes. rather see it than hear it. <laughs> yeah, I think she thought that I was outside. <laughs> so um, I just made it blatantly clear that I was not outside, and then was super awkward after that and but i did not confront them or have a conversation at that moment um i thought it wouldn't really be helpful because i was probably a little emotional and you know feeling some kind of way um yes so i hey, decided hey, to table just, that conversation okay so. i know it's about to get serious but so before we take a turn into like this is actually this is hard i know this is hard no is hard. no parent i know <laughs> no. but i have to know what's the thing you said so I didn't say anything to them. Did you just um, make really loud noises and be like, hello, I, hello? I, what did I, you do? I honestly just got very loud. Like I started to do dishes and clang things around. <laughs> you know, oh, so you didn't go, make them, you didn't go didn't, charging into the room no, and be like, I, I did not. <laughs> no. So do they know that you know? Yes, they, they are aware. <laughs> so we actually tabled the conversation. He left not long after that, and I just didn't say anything. Um and then my husband and I had a conversation with our daughter separately. Um, we're pretty open about these things. We're aware that teenagers are teenagers and they have hormones and they're going to do things. Yeah. Um, and so our daughter wasn't super uncomfortable to talk about it, which is very odd because I was very uncomfortable. <laughs> um, but we did have a conversation with her. But now I'm wondering how to go about having a conversation with a, do I have a conversation with her and her boyfriend together? And B, how do I talk to his parents about this? Because at some point she's going to need, or not need to, but want to go to his house and hang out. Okay. And we have to set some boundaries and have some conversations. And I just, I don't know where they are, his parents are on this, you know, journey. And so I just kind of want to, I guess, set a precedence of boundaries. <laughs> Yeah, so so you don't have a relationship with her. Number one, thanks for letting me laugh along with you. Um, <laughs> I'm just projecting into the future here in my own house, and so right. um, I don't. <laughs> I appreciate you letting us all walk alongside you. And yeah. actually, you went way ahead of us all. <laughs> We're just watching. Um, right. And so, in all seriousness, yeah, I know this is hard. Um, yeah, that's just hard. And so. <sighs> Oh man, this one's kind of messy. So, 
You don't know his parents. You don't really have a relationship with him I other don't. than, okay. Um, I know him way better than I know his parents. He okay. mostly comes to our house. Um, so she doesn't usually visit there. And I have just, you know, seen his father in passing, uh, pick up, drop off. Um, okay. We had talked about having them over for dinner and honestly just never really got around to it. But now I know that absolutely needs to happen now. <laughs> so, hey, um, listen. Yeah. <laughs> that would be the greatest per- parent revenge dinner of all time. <laughs> like, we're going to have his parents over and we're all going to talk about this together. That yeah. would be the most legend baller parent move of all time. You, if that happens, record it because it, it will be a great. YouTube sensation. It'll pay your house off. It would be incredible. Oh, goodness. Man. So, oh, yeah. Because, how old is this cat? Is he 16 too? He is also 16, yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> This is one of those things that the world has shifted a little bit underneath us. Mm -hmm. If this had happened when I was 16, I feel like in that universe, parents trusted other parents to have these type of conversations with their kids. Mm -hmm. Now we're in a world where I just don't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't feel right to me anymore. And so for you to go about talking to him now, if, he came over and you wanted to address the boundaries of your home. Mm-hmm. I think that's fully okay. Um, okay. And so one would be a boundaries conversation and one would might be the moral character. Like I'll tell this kid, like not my daughter, that conversation. Right. Right. So backing out first and foremost, high five to you for raising a 16 year old that y'all could have this conversation. It wasn't weird for y'all. No, or, it really that, wasn't. We actually laughed more than it was awkward. So, so listen, you you're know, doing okay. you are you are way ahead of the curve. Yeah. It would have been more awesome if you'd run in there screaming and yelling and <laughs> and throwing water on him, whatever. Um, but the fact that you recognized I'm not going to handle this well right this second. I'm going to let them know that I'm going to put a stop to this by letting them know that I'm here and I know what's going on and mm-hmm. I'm going to get control of my emotions before I broach this. Good for you. High right. five to you. That's Thank that's you. awesome. Second is both you and your husband addressed this. That's awesome. And you addressed it obviously in a way that um, allowed for some levity and some seriousness. What yeah. I often see people do is try to treat their 16-year-olds and 17-year-olds and 18-year-olds like their 10-year-olds. Right? My 10-year-old, right. I can end your world. I can cut off your <laughs> communication to the outside world. 16-year-olds will go hook up in an Arby's parking lot, right? I mean, it's a yeah. different game unless you just say you're homeschooling now. You don't get any electronics. I'm going to cut you. And then then you're on borrowed time, right? Then you're 700 right. days away from them saying bye, right? Yeah. And so there there is a – that in my house, these are my boundaries. These are my rules. And, man, you're – if I'm going to default to relationship more than, than um, excommunication, right? That's a hard – the fishy, scary boundary. How'd your husband handle this? Um, he surprisingly wasn't as upset as I thought he would be. Okay. Um, I talked to him about it first, and then we talked about it and how we were going to approach it with her. Mm-hmm. Um, we kind of made a game plan, and then we talked about it with her. Um, so we made sure that none of the other kids were around, and we had her by herself. And you know, we just kind of brought it up, and you know, just said, "Okay, we know that." something's happening i don't know what the thing is but it's, there's some stuff happening and you know we need to talk about it and really talk about the boundaries in our home and you Good know you, where do we go from here and so. the fact that you and your husband put your heads together and talked about it and came up with a, a plan that y'all shared together i mean that's just parent 101 you're you're way far ahead good for you guys sure. so at the end of the day um because he's a child this kid's a child mm-hmm. i would give his parents a heads up Mm -hmm. Um, that's just me. I'd call him and say, Hey, look, this happened at our house. And we talked to our daughter about it. We like your son. Um, we don't hate him. We don't think anybody's evil, but because they're kids, we, we thought it was right for you to know. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, that's how I would handle this. Again, you never know what's coming, what's next. Um, they may say, so like they're 16 yeah. or they may say, Oh my gosh, you're breaking up right away. And there's no communication. Ever. You never know how that's going to go when it, that's the, the hard crappy part about having boundaries mm-hmm. is you can't be responsible for other people response to your boundaries. Right. So one of my boundaries is if there is a child acting, um, um, not being safe, 
whether that's mm-hmm. playing out in the road or um, it, whatever the thing happens to be, I'm going to bring the other parents into the loop. I'm just going to let them know, right? Mm-hmm. Again, 20, 30 years ago, you have that conversation with the two of them, and then it stays there. I, think, I don't think we're there anymore. And so I always want to make partners with um, other parents in my community with kids. So I, I wouldn't hold on to that. I would be ready for the ramifications of that. This may all be fun, and, not fun in games, but relationship building. Your daughter got to hear from you. I think this is an awesome opportunity for you, not without dad, to take daughter out. And... Mm-hmm. <laughs> You heard her, so now it's time for her to listen to you. And you can tell her about your teenage years. You can tell her about your awkward experiences, how um, even when you're married, things can get off the rails and weird and hard and unexpected and awkward. I think this is a time for you to um, really speak into that relationship between you and your daughter. I think that could be a really magic season for y'all. And she is going to, you can melt her and it's a, I hope you do. Right. I hope you do. Mm -hmm. Um, But at the end of the day, you could call this guy's parents and he could get cut off and then your daughter's going to turn on you. Expect that could happen. And that doesn't mean you did the wrong thing. Okay. Um, That means that his parents have different values and different boundaries than you guys do. And that's just part of it. Your daughter's going to, you're playing a long game with her now. She's going to know that you're, at the end of the day, you're doing what you could to keep her safe and to keep her tethered to the values that your family has, whatever they may be. I do have to know, are you nervous about that conversation? You feel empowered about it? Like, tell me about I how that phone call is I feel really nervous go. about that conversation. I don't. So tell me why. I'm, I honestly, I don't know that we have the same values as in, I'm honestly worried that it's going to be a so what, like no big deal. Um, and then I will have to put some really strong, firm boundaries about her visiting his house. And so that is kind of what I am concerned about. He really likes his family a lot. And I think she wants to continue, you know, going there and, you know, and trying to build that relationship with his family. But if they aren't, aren't really on the same page with values, then I feel like I should not let her go there, if that makes yeah. sense. I think this is a really pivotal time for... You and your daughter's relationship. I wholeheartedly support you. Your values are your values. And if you don't want her in an unsafe situation, then that's your right as a parent. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I hope, and I know this is easier said than done, I hope that you will always feel affirmed in your parent values, whatever they happen to be. And I hope you will always default to a relationship too, which it sounds like y'all clearly have. Yeah. Um, but if you have to draw some boundaries and say the only time you can see this this boy or at my at our house, and if you violate those, then it's not going to be that you saw this boy. It's that now we can't trust you because we put a boundary up, whatever that happened to be, and you violated the boundary. Then it's not about the the f- action number one. It's about number two, right? Um, right? This is an important season for you guys, a really important season. And so for whatever it's worth. Um, from the outside, it sounds like you guys are handling this with the right amount of humor and grace and communication in your marriage in, with your kids. Good for you guys all the way across. My hope is that 20 years from now, she's married to some knucklehead and this becomes a hilarious Thanksgiving story I'll tell <laughs> over and over. Um, Thank you. <laughs> and that this becomes a really remarkable time that you can teach her um, about valuing herself and what love looks like and how messy relationships can get and because you've walked there, right? Yeah. Um, and that can be a really vulnerable, honest time between you and her. Yeah. And it could get really off the rails. And so if it gets off the rails, I hope that you will continue to loop back to your default this first time around, which is I'm going to make sure my husband and I are on the same page. We're always going to – we're going to head into these these value conversations together. We're going to make sure we're not putting our daughter on blast in front of our other kids. Unless it's really funny. Then it's got to come up at the dinner table for sure. <laughs> um, but that you, And you're continuing to honor her in that relationship. How she chooses to revolt and throw her 16-year-old fits against up and, up and down against your boundaries, that's her deal. That's what 16-year-olds do, right? Um, that doesn't mean you're wrong or out of whack or out of balance. 20 years from now, she'll thank you. Five, 10 years from now, she'll thank you. But yeah. 
you, you said it best. Six month relationships are a thousand year marriages to 16 year olds. <laughs> Everything's the most dramatic thing ever. And oh my gosh, yeah. you took away my love. Huh? <laughs> um, so here, high five to you, parent to parent. Way to go, Mary. Thank but yeah, you. I'd make Thank that conversation. You. I'd have that conversation, and um, I would. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would do my best to not let my heart rate get up one beat extra. You have okay. nothing to be ashamed about. Your values are your values. You've got nothing to. Um, um, the unknown is the unknown, but you're doing the right thing. Good for you. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your help and your insight because um, it's just, I don't know, it's just kind of messy. It feels really overwhelming. So It does. And tell, tell your, let your daughter in on that too. Okay. And when you say, hey, you're still a child, you're a kid. She'll be like, no, I'm 16. I can drive and I <laughs> can hook up with my boyfriend when you guys are out in the yard. I can do whatever I want. Like, yeah, I know. And you're still 16. Right. And that's <laughs> it's so hard. You might as well start telling her how you used to go uphill in the snow to school both ways. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like that. You're in that territory. Or back when I was a kid, Metallica was really heavy metal. You're, I know you all sound like that, but um, those conversations and that, that continuing to go back to relationship, back to relationship, back to values, back to values, back to relationship, trumps everything. Good for you. Good for you. Um, hey, if you will do me a huge favor, this is <laughs> this isn't for the audience. This is just for me personally. I have to know how that conversation goes. So if you'll write back um, and let us know how it goes, or call back and leave a message. And if it's a disaster, if the the her that guy's dad just starts laughing at you, you idiot! What a nerd! Let me know that too. Um, then he'll be an idiot. But. Um, Anyway, give me a call back. I, I got to know how this ends. Uh, but thank you so much for the call, Mary. I just got so many feelings on this. I have so many feelings. I have so many jokes that I want to make. I have so many things that I want to announce to 16-year-olds that I'm not going to announce. Oh, my gosh, dude. My kids are 11 and 5. I'm not ready for this, James. We need to we need to produce a subscriber paid subscription podcast version where you just say what's exactly on my mind. Yeah. We could make a fortune. It only lasts two episodes before we got canceled, but it would be spectacular. That's true. It would be spectacular.